Objection. This meditation is just a part of the right. Reply. No, for the following Shruti passage allows option. He who performs the horse sacrifice or who knows it as such. Taitriya Sanghita 5.3.12.2 Since it occurs in a context dealing with knowledge, and since we see the same kind of meditation based on resemblance being applied to other rites also, we understand that meditation will produce the same result. Of all rites, the greatest is the horse sacrifice, for it leads to identity with Hiranyagarbha in his collective and individual aspects. And it's mentioned here, at the very beginning of this treatise on the knowledge of Brahman, is an indication that all rites fall within the domain of relative existence. It will be shown later on that the result of this meditation is identification with hunger or death. Objection. But the regular nitya rites are not productive of relative results. Reply. Not so. For the Shruti sums up the results of all rites together. Every rite is connected with the wife. In the passage, let me have a wife. This much indeed is desire. Brihadaranyaka 1.4.17 It is shown that all action is naturally prompted by desire, and that the results achieved through a son, through rites, and through meditation are this world, the world of the manes and that of the gods, respectively. Sutra 1.5.16 And the conclusion arrived at will be that everything consists of three kinds of food. This universe indeed consists of three things, name, form, and action. Sutra 1.6.1 The manifested result of all action is nothing but the relative universe, it is these three which were in an undifferentiated state before manifestation. That again is manifested owing to the resultant of the actions of all beings as a tree comes out of the seed. This differentiated and undifferentiated universe, consisting of the gross and subtle worlds and their essence, falls within the category of ignorance and has been superimposed by it on the self as action its factors, and its results, as if they were its own form. Although the self is different from them, has nothing to do with name, form, and action, is one without a second, and is eternal, pure, enlightened, and free by nature, yet it appears as just the reverse of this, as consisting of differences of action, its factors, and its results, and so on. Therefore, for the removal of ignorance, the seed of defects such as desire and action, like the removal of the idea of a snake from a rope, with regard to a man who is disgusted with this universe of means and ends, consisting of actions, their factors, and their results, having realized that they are just so much, the knowledge of Brahman is being set forth. The first two sections, beginning with the head of the sacrificial horse is the dawn, will be devoted to the meditation regarding the horse sacrifice. The meditation about the horse is described as the horse is the most important thing in this sacrifice. Its importance is indicated by the fact that the sacrifice is named after it and its presiding deity is Prajapati, Hiranyagarbha. Namaste. So the meditation is not part of the right. Rather, the right is the context, the experiential place where the meditation can take place. It creates a context or a background for the meditation that gives it meaning. 
see, like an artist, has to have a structure, has to have a framework or limitations to work within to produce any meaningful result. From my own experience, I can tell you, someone would come to me and say, okay, we need 30 seconds of orchestral music with maybe some synthetic enhancements, synthesizer enhancements for a certain product. And it should be modern sound. It should sound like Star Wars. Huh? I've had people tell me stuff like this. And that gives you a framework. Yes, it's limitations. But it also supports the actual theme of the meditation. So in the present case, for example, we have the horse sacrifice. Ashvamedha literally means horse sacrifice, uh, where the horse is offered in the fire. Eh. But anyway, <laughs> they are simply a background, a context, or even a pretext for an extended metaphor. All meditation is metaphor. <laughs> even meditation on the void. Huh? The void is probably one of the best metaphors ever <laughs> for sushupti. But in this case, the metaphor is of the conditioned Brahman, how it manifests as the universe and giving one access to the universal point of view, which is exactly the consciousness of Brahma, Hiranyagarbha, the cosmic seed, or, as he's sometimes known, hunger or death. Huh? Desire. Hunger means desire. I want this. I want, I need that. Huh? It's a matter of survival. And if you don't get it, the alternative is death. So everybody has to eat. Isn't it? All creatures. So this is fundamental to the entire world of life. And to realize it puts one on a higher platform than those who simply run through the ritual, which is described in detail in Rig Veda and other places, Shatapata Brahmana and so on, but they are just, you know, they're the backup band. They're, <laughs> they're the rhythm section, right? And the meditator is actually the lead singer, the soloist. Uh, the dude who gets the result. Now, in the classical view or in the materialistic religious view, in the Ashva made a sacrifice, that would be the king. The king who has arranged and paid for all this stuff, this elaborate ceremony that goes on for weeks. Huh? And if you include the horse part of a year. So when the horse is sacrificed, this is symbolic of the ruler attaining a position of cosmic leadership. In other words, he's speaking for Brahman when he gives an order and so on, because he is perpetuating the order, the natural state of human society as intended by Brahman. That's the real nature of the pious king. But in the expanded sense, what he's doing is that he is attaining an exalted state of self-realization through extended meditation. I mean, over a year or more on the sacrifice, knowing that the horse symbolizes himself. He is offering himself as a sacrifice for the good of the people. This was Yudhishthir's point of view and was expressed in the Pandava's slogan, all good for the people. Huh? 
I mean, they were great leaders. But what was behind it was that Yudhishthir had sacrificed himself, his life, his personal aspirations to Dharma. And by following Dharma to the end, no matter what the result, he created such good karma that he was able to walk physically into the heavenly planets. So who can do that, right? Maybe it's all a big allegory, but that's okay. That's okay because, as stated in chapter 3, part of 4, verse 1, mantra or sutra 1 of the Brahma Sutra, all the meditations given in the Vedas are equal. Why? They are all metaphors for Brahman. Otherwise, you know, they're Maya. They're forms. All form is illusion. Because Brahman is formless. Without a boundary. Without a second. Without activities or names. So there are no parts in Brahman. Brahman is one solid thing of consciousness. So it can't become this or that. It can't be called by a name, even though we use the word Brahman. It doesn't really explain anything. It's just a pointer. But if we assign a metaphor to cover Brahman, remember, we... We can cover ourselves with upadis, that we are individual and so on. But this is contaminated by ignorance. And so we have to suffer in material life. Whereas God, any of the forms of God, are covered not by the jiva upadi, but by the ishva upadi. See, ishva upadi Ishaopadi, I think is the proper Sandhya, is pure and all-pervading. So if anyone in any part of the creation meditates on any of the metaphors for the Supreme Brahman, huh, eventually they get the result. Now, the direct result of the horse sacrifice is identity with Brahma, Hiranyagarbha, the sum total of false ego, which means desire and effort in the universe. But that is a platform from which, by a single step, one can realize the supreme, unconditioned Brahman directly. So, you know, this is a major upgrade in the consciousness of the individual. So this sacrifice and meditation on the sacrifice, which gives the same result, is an outstanding asset for anybody who wants to realize Brahman, a major step on the way. Huh? And yet, this is only the first meditation in the Brihadaranyakas. So what we're trying to do is prepare a platform a context, a ground for further realization. Having understood that even the highest of all Vedic rites, or either performance of or meditation thereon, can only give a result which is still within the realm of samsara. Because after all, even Lord Brahma is not eternal. He also dissolves back into Brahman at the end of the universal creation. So, still, we should strive for this realization because this is the beginning of actual transcendental spiritual life. And this is possible through meditation on the horse of the Ashvamedha Jagnya. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum Aum Namah Shivaya